And now, it's time for another Dice Tower review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, the Game Boy Geek here. How about this? You and I and everybody here are servants of King Arthur. However, some of us are loyal servants of King Arthur. The others are minions of Mordred. Evil people trying to throw over our plans to help serve King Arthur. Now, the evil minions know who each other are. But the loyal servants of King Arthur don't know who anybody is but themselves. They don't know who to trust. This is a game called Resistance the Avalon. It's based off the original game called The Resistance by Indie Boards and Cards. This is an amazing game about deception, secret roles, deduction, trying to figure out who is who, who can I trust. It's an amazing social game. It's one of my favorite games to play. Let's check it out deeper, show you how it's played, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. I'm going to show you this game as a five-player game, and at first I'm not going to show you any of the special roles that are in the game. This is a simple five-player game where you see the first three people are going to be these bluish, nice-looking, loyal servants of King Arthur. Two of the five are going to be these evil minions of Mordred, and you can see they're evil. At the bottom it says Minion of Mordred, and they have this reddish, uh, disgusting-looking color that they are evil, and these guys are good. So those are the five people, three good, too bad. Now those cards will get shuffled and dealt out randomly to the players and they will they will be face down. Nobody will be able to see who they are. But for this demo I'm going to show you, I'm going to leave them face up so you know who they are. But nobody tells anybody who they are at first. At the beginning of the game, uh, everybody closes their eyes and the evil people are asked, Minions of Mordred, Mordred? Open, open your, your eyes, eyes and see, and each, see other. each other. And the two minions of Mordred would open their eyes and they get to see who they are. And then you hear, Minions of Mordred, close your eyes. Everybody open your eyes. So now everybody opens their eyes. If you're a loyal servant of King Arthur, you don't know who anybody is except yourself. You don't know who to trust. If you're a minion of Mordred, you know, you have perfect information at this point. You know who the, who the other minion of Mordreds are and, you, and by that you know who the, who the loyal servants of King Arthur are. So that happens before the game starts. Now, how the game works is uh, essentially someone's going to start off as the leader. Let's just say it's this person right here. And essentially we're going to go through some different quests in time. Uh, and essentially uh, the, the, the good team is trying to pass quests because they're loyal servants of King Arthur. They want all their quests to pass. Uh, and the evil minions of Mordred, they are against King Arthur. So they're trying to get quests to fail. Now there's five up to five total quests. Uh, the first team to win three of the five wins the game. If three quests pass, the loyal servants of King Arthur win. If three uh, quests fail, then the minions of Mordred win the game. So how does a quest work? Well, in quest one here, you can see there's a number two here. And in this game, that means two people are going to go on the first quest. And this leader gets to propose which two people go on the quest. Well, they can do themselves. So let's say they, they say themselves they're going to go on a quest and they give themselves a little uh, token here. And let's say they give a token to this person over here. Now, everybody gets to vote whether or not they trust this team and whether they think this team is okay to go on this quest. And so they have these vote tokens, so they're face down right now, where it has an approve and a reject. And so if they approve the mission and they trust this team, they're going to place the approve uh, vote down, face down, so nobody sees. Uh, obviously, this lady's probably going to approve because uh, it's her and she knows she's good. This guy knows that uh, this guy's bad, so maybe he uh, he's going to approve this and leave the reject out. Uh, this person's not sure, maybe he rejects, and this person knows he's on a he's a bad guy and he's going to fail the mission, so he approves. So once everybody puts their votes down, they get flipped over, and the majority rules. In this case. Ooh, you have one, two, three, four, four approves and one reject. So that means that this mission is going to go. And so what happens in the mission is there's going to be these mission cards that are dealt out to the two people on the mission. 
each of these mission cards, one of them is going to be a success card and one of them is going to be a fail card. They get dealt these cards face down. Each person that was put on the team gets a one fail and one success face down to them. And then they basically say whether they're going to fail or succeed the, the mission. Now, the good team or the loyal servants of King Arthur have to, have to succeed a quest. They don't have any choice. They have to succeed it. Now, the minions of Mordred, they're trying to fail missions to win the game, but they have the option of either failing it or, uh, or, or, or approving and succeeding the mission. And sometimes they do that just to throw people off so people might think that they're good. So once they're there, these, couple, these cards get shuffled, and then they get flipped over, and we see what happens. In this case, oh, success and fail. So what happens first is one of these tokens, the red side, it's double-sided, blue and red. The red one goes here to say that the spies have won the first mission of the Minions of Mordred. Now, what this tells us is at least one person is a spy, and everybody at the, at the table knows that at least one Minion of Mordred was in one of those two people. And so this starts usually the, the most fun part of the game is where people, now that there's some information out there, people start uh, you know, uh, accusing each other and, and trying to figure it out. And so now this, this uh, leader token goes to the next person, and then that person suggests a team, and that gets voted over and over. So this sort of goes on. That's how you do a team building and a quest building. And really the game is sort of not so much played here and mechanically, it's really played above the table. And so what happens is, Again, if you're a uh, loyal servant of King Arthur, you're trying to put only good people on your team. And if you don't trust anybody, you're going to try to fail or vote no to that team going. And if you're a minion of Mordred, you're trying to get at least one person on the team uh, to fail at least three quests before it's over. Now in a five-player game, you can see as the quests go on, quest number two requires three people, quest three is two people, quest four is three people, and quest five is three people. Now, in a five-player game, if even one fail comes up in any quest, the minions of Mordred win that round with the red token. Now, in the voting, if during the vote, it was a majority was a reject, meaning they did not approve that mission, let's say, um, this gentleman was the uh, was the leader. A majority vote was to reject it. This person would now pass a leader token to the next person, and this vote track would move up. This essentially means this is the second vote for this quest. If this person puts out a mission and it gets rejected, the leader goes to the next person, and this goes up. Now this can go on because every time that you you see people vote, you get information. So as you get better at this game, more and more of the teams get rejected so people can learn information. Now if it gets to the fifth mission, if this one gets failed and rejected, the rules state that the, the Minions of Mordor automatically win that quest. Uh, but I do know a lot of people call this the Hammer mission, and that instead of just failing it, this mission, whatever team that person says, just goes. So that's how pretty much it, it works its way all the way through all the quests here. Here's some of the special roles that come with this game that really add some awesome layers. The first two roles to put in is Merlin and the Assassin. When you're Merlin, you get to actually see who the minions of Mordor are at the beginning of the game, even though you're on the good side. You are the optimal, you have perfect information. So at the beginning of the game, after, after the spies get to see each other, you hear spies, spies close, close your eyes, eyes. put your, put your thumbs, thumbs up. up. And so the, the spies put their thumbs up, and then and Merlin, Merlin, open, open your, your eyes, eyes and see the minions of Mordred. Mordred. And then Merlin gets to see who the spies are, but they don't get to see who he is. And then, spies, spies put, your put your thumbs in, in. Everybody, everybody close your, your eyes. eyes, everybody, everybody open, open your, your eyes. eyes. And so now Merlin knows who the bad guys are. And so he has a leg up, he's trying to give out that information, but it's not so easy. He can't just give it out honestly and really quickly because at the end of the game, even if the, the, uh, the good team has won three quests, on the bad side, there's one assassin there. And that assassin gets to talk to the other minions of Mordred and guess and try to pick out, or it shouldn't really be a guess, they should probably have a good idea or not, who Merlin is by who is who seemed to know the most. And if the assassin picks who Merlin is at the end of the game, even though the, the loyal servants have gotten three quests and supposedly had won the game the last minute, the assassin can pick who Merlin is and if Merlin, if they pick Merlin, Boom, and Merlin gets assassinated, and the minions of Mordred win the game. 
it's really a cool dynamic of he has perfect information, but he can't give it out too, too obviously. So those are the first two roles that we throw into the game. The next two characters to put in are Percival and Morgana. Now if we put just Percival in uh, by himself, in addition to Merlin and the Assassin, after the minions of Mordred have seen each other, and then they put their thumbs up so Merlin knows who they are, everybody's eyes are shut, everybody's thumbs are back down, and then you hear, Merlin, Merlin open, open your, your thumb, thumb so Percival open, can know you. And then Percival, Percival open your, your eyes, eyes only Percival. Percival. So Percival gets to see who Merlin is, and then they all close their eyes and they start the game. In that case, Percival gets to know who Merlin is. That way, he gets to kind of act like he knows more than Merlin, or try to cover for Merlin if he thinks he's given up too, too much information. So as Percival, you're trying to make the, uh, the, the, the minions of Mordred think that you're Merlin, even though you're not. Now, if you add Morgana in with Percival, when Percival gets to see Merlin and nobody else gets to see him, well, Morgana's thumb goes up as well. So, at that point, you hear, Merlin, Merlin and Morgana, and Morgana. Open, put, your put your thumbs up so Percival may know you. So Percival sees two thumbs up, he knows one of them's Merlin and one of them's Morgana, and the whole game he's trying to figure out which one is Merlin and which one's Morgana. It just adds another layer of amazement. Now here's the last two characters I'm going to show you, Oberon and Mordred. Now Oberon is unknown to evil. So at the beginning of the game when the minions of Mordred get to... Minions of Mordred, Mordred open your eyes and see each other. Each other. Oberon must keep his eyes shut, so the other minions of Mordred don't know who he is, and he doesn't know who the, the other minions are. So it kind of it makes their, their, they don't have perfect information of everyone who's good and everyone who's bad at that point. Um, Mordred is unknown to Merlin. So, uh, at the beginning of the game, when Merlin gets to see all the uh, minions of Mordred, they put their thumbs up. Mordred does not put his thumb up, so Merlin does not know which one's a which one's Mordred and which one's possibly another loyal servant of King Arthur. So that makes Merlin's job a lot tougher. The last little extra piece I'm going to show you is the Lady of the Lake token. Now, this is usually played when you have you know a, a decent amount of people. What happens is after the second quest and at the end of the second, third, and fourth quest. This Lady of the Lake token, it starts to the person to the right of the original first quest leader, and then at the end of the second quest, this person gets to give this Lady of the Lake card to anybody on the table, and that person must pass them their loyalty card. So these are face down, they pass one of them to them, and it's going to show that person whether they are a minion of Mordred, showing red, or a uh, loyal servant showing blue. Now, at the end of the next quest, the person that has this gets to now give it to somebody else, and it can't be anybody else who's already had it. So the Lady of the Lake sort of passes around it. That's why it's used with a lot of people, because sometimes there's just too much or not enough information going on with, with that many people, and this helps uh, get the information out there a little easier. Well, there you have the Resistance Avalon. Now, I can't tell you how much I love this game. I'm an engineer, I love deduction. I love thick deduction. And to add deduction and social awareness and stabbing each other in the back on top of it, oh, it's an epiphany. This game is amazing. The design of this game is just brilliant. The fact that you're trying to, the whole time, trying to figure out what people are doing, and you're doing it in two different ways. One is you're doing it logically, by looking how people vote, and then seeing what happens, and trying to put two and two together. Well, if he was a minion of Mordred, he'd do this. And if he was a servant of King Arthur, he'd do this. Try to break down what people are doing. That's the deduction side of it. I love that side of it. The other side of it is reading the people, reading their tells. If you're good at poker, you're gonna be great at reading these people. But even if you're not great at poker, it doesn't take a genius to figure out, ah, Aunt Betty's sweating over there. She must have been the spy that uh, failed this mission. It is just so much fun to watch the interaction happen between the people that play this game. We play this game with my family, and they're not gamers. My mom is like June Cleaver to a spitting image. She acts the same, she looks like her, she's never said a bad word her whole life. She's never told a lie as far as I know. We got her in here and her and my dad were both spies the first game. Oh my gosh, to see that she was able to lie through her teeth to gain my trust, only later to show, oh, we failed the mission because of me. Oh my gosh, I almost fell off the back of my chair. You will see people's relationships change with this. The whole time you're trying to gain trust. You're trying to show people that they can trust you. But can you really be trusted? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. 
And it's really funny, as soon as you finish this game, which only takes about 30 minutes, you're gonna wanna play it again and again and again. Every time we brought this game to the table, it never gets played less than three times, at the very least. Everybody loves it. So, is there anything I don't like about this game? Not really. I, I really can't think of a bad thing. Now, it plays from five to 10 people. Um, I really like it at five and six and seven-ish. Um, when it gets to like nine or 10, it kind of gets a little crazy, but it's still fun. I, I would never turn a game down of any number of this game because I love it so much. Now, the thing that makes this thing replayability, the replayability of this amazing is uh, much like its predecessor, The Resistance, which this is based off of, uh, which had plot cards, which can allow you to do certain things. This gives hidden roles. So, you know, when you add the layer of the roles of the Merlin uh, and the Assassin, and Percival and Morgana and Oberon and you know you add these different levels and the cool thing is is you can play it very easy at, at the beginning with no extra cards just to get people used to the game then you can add Merlin and the assassin add that second layer and then you can add Percival and Morgana for another layer and maybe you could swap that out with Oberon and depending if the, 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 the loyal servants are winning too much or the spies are winning too much you can throw in some of these roles that tips the game a little bit to the good side or the bad side to even things up. It's genius. Not a bad thing I could say about this game. Go out and buy it. Oh, and by the way, it's like 20 bucks or 25 bucks. It's very affordable. It's readily available. It's At that price, it's the best value game I've ever bought. I love this game. I'll never turn a game down. It is so much fun. You'll never believe what your friends will do to you in this game. You gotta check it out. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.